So for number one, they want us to take this um, area between beneath the blue curve and then rotate it about the y-axis. Um, now, they're asking us to explain why using the slicing method is awkward, and if we were to use the slicing method to revolve it about the y-axis, um, we would get a bunch of disks like so, and we would stack them up vertically. Now, the problem here is that the lower part of the disk, the smaller one, it has the same boundary as the bigger disk, right? It's the same curve. So, um, when we're finding the, the area of a disk that we're summing up vertically, we're doing A1, which is the bigger one, minus A2. So, A1 is going to be here, um, pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared. However, the radius is described um, by where it touches this curve, right? And it's actually, it's going to be the same curve. So we're going to end up with pi times f of y squared minus pi times f of y squared. And that's just going to go to zero. Um, so this ends up being a bit complicated to do it uh, via the slicing method. So we're going to try through the shell method. Um, and now the shell method, what we're going to do is we're going to take this height over here where it touches the curve all the way out to the x-axis. And then we're going to revolve this about the y-axis. And it's going to form um, this kind of hollow cylinder, right? Uh, maybe for it to be hollow, I should draw that it has something like this. Yeah. So if we open this out, um, imagine that it's a sheet of paper that you just wrapped around to make a cylinder. And if we open it, it's just an area, right? Um, this is my area as a function of x. So what we're doing is we're summing up all these cylinders here. If I would take this height and I would revolve it, I would get this tinier cylinder like so. And then we're summing them all up from 0 all the way out to 1. Um, so my volume, it is the integral from 0 to 1 of whatever my area is as a function of x, of ax dx. Um, so now we basically just have to find an expression for ax and then sum up all these, um, all these cylinders that revolved, are revolved around the y-axis. Um, so let's think about this. Um, this part right here, this bigger part, well, this is just the circumference of my circle, right? When I open up my rectangle. And now a circumference is given by 2 pi r, but in this case, the radius is just the distance from 0 to wherever I'm at on my x-axis. So if I'm at x is over here, that's going to be my radius, right? This is going to be a bigger circumference, like, um, like so. And, and so we can see that the radius is just wherever I'm at on my x-axis, right? So it's just 2 pi x. And then the height, and I'm going to do that in a different color, the height here is just wherever it touches this blue curve. Um, and so it's described by this equation here. Therefore, we can say that the height is x times x minus 1 squared. Therefore, my ax is base times height, right? It's 2 pi x times um, x times x minus 1 squared. And so I'm just going to distribute this to make it easier. So that is ax is equal to 2 pi, um, that's x squared. And now I'm going, to, I'm going to foil this guy out. So that is um, x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then when I multiply everything out, um, this is going to give me 2 pi, I'm going to leave that outside because it's a constant, and then x to the power of 4 uh, minus 2x cubed, and then plus x squared. So that is my ax. Now I'm ready to just um, substitute this back in my volume, right? So my volume goes from, oops, my volume is the integral from 0 to 1 because that's how I'm summing up my shells. And then the 2 pi, because it's a constant, I'm going to put it outside. And then I'm just going to copy this, right? So it's just the integral of x to the power of 4 minus 2x cubed plus x squared and all of this times dx. So um, we are ready to integrate this. This is uh, 2 pi outside, and that is x to the power of 5. Oops, that was quite ugly. 
x to the power of 5 over 5 uh, minus 2x to the power of 4 over 4 and then plus x cubed over 3 and all of this evaluated um, the boundaries are between 0 and 1 right so 0 and 1 which is equal to 2 pi and now we're just applying our boundary um, we don't have to apply the lower boundary because the 0 just disappears right so we just apply 1 um, so that's 1 fifth uh, minus 2 over 4 plus 1 third uh, which is equal to let's see 2 pi uh, let me put this in my calculator, 1 fifth minus 1 half, and then plus 1 divided by 3. Um, this gives us 1 over 30, and therefore my volume is equal to pi, and then 2 over 30 gives me pi over 15. Um, that's what I get when I revolve this area about the y-axis.